to the family, so things are looking up very nice for us. Okay. Uh, anything else? Well, sort of. Well, we'll get to that part. <laughs> okay. Later on. Uh, Dennis, fire. I have nothing else other than our first group went to the Eugene fire training. They all seem to enjoy it, and we'll have a probably a bigger group next month going to take part in it. But they all seem to have a real good time, even though they couldn't do a whole lot as far as getting out and eating. Everything was kind of closed up in Eugene, so. But they seem to do real good, and the truck fared, and no problems. They seem happy at one of my conferences. Uh, had a good time and said they learned a lot. They did. They did. So. Good instructors. Um, engineering? Daryl? Oh, no. yeah, I'm here for Daryl today. <laughs> um, I believe we were wanting to update on the cold waste building. It's scheduled to be done on Monday. I just went in and checked about. 30 minutes ago, and I see that the electrician has still been working. Um, we need the alarm light on the exterior of the building still. Uh, the breaker panel's in, but the interior portion, like the breakers themselves, are not in. It's a little simple stuff, so I'm assuming that that is on track. Um, for the cooling water, uh, we are currently waiting on the pump still. Uh, the building is getting put together. They were supposed to have an installation inspection day through the county, but uh, no one came out. So they're waiting on that so they can get the walls in and everything on the inside. Um, and then the north end water. We are ready to go out on bid on that. We just need those easements to be sent out and approved. Um, I believe we're waiting on Jeff or someone to do that. We received um, the easement descriptions that I'm working on. The easement agreements are a little more than just the easement because we've got some maintenance requirements and things like that due to the fact that the landowners will be responsible for power, having power installed, things of that nature. So, also what sewer rates are going to be charged, things of that nature, because 
DEQ switched it up on us a little bit to where we have to own this pressurized system. We have to own the grinder pumps coming from the individual service. Christophe, Larson, you know, Pacific Pine, and Anderson. A little more complicated, but I got those this morning, and we should have something by the end of, I would say, week after next, excuse me, in the next week and a half or so, out and back with everybody. The, the goal is to have, go out to bid the week of the 22nd through 22nd of February. And that's got to be at least a minimum of two weeks. So what what do these grinder pumps bring the sewer side of this project to the total? It's going to make the difference of about fifteen thousand dollars. From I don't have a price on those pumps actually yet. I put out for an RFD for them. They're using the same pump in Crescent on another job. They said the cost of the pumps was around five thousand dollars, but I, I also want to get a spare. So uh, I don't know Daryl sent out another. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So how did this get missed? Yeah. You know that's a good question. Uh, I, I don't I don't know to tell you the truth. It uh, additional DEQ requirements. But it did. It went to plan review mm -hmm. and. That's when they decided that they did not want the property owners to maintain or own their own grinder pumps. <clears throat> uh, we have some grinder pumps in town and they've gone through the system and they got approved by the plumbing inspector and installed and they are owned and operated by the owner of the property. <coughs> so I thought that was the same that would do out there. But then when this whole plan went to DEQ for review, which they had it forever, they, they had it for almost a month. And when they came back, they said that was the biggest issue was they did not want the landowners to own, to own or operate the pumps or maintain them. So, did we talk to DEQ at all during the planning and design stage of this system? I, we did. And yeah. they take every review period takes about a month. And with all the changes that we were pulling, you know, we went from gravity to pressure, from gravity to pressure. Mm -hmm. um, Per request, um, DEQ wasn't getting back to us fast enough. So within that whole month that those back and forths were going, we were waiting for DEQ that entire time. Um, so there wasn't really anything we could have done for that. Um, to cover those additional fees, there's the $4,500 um, a year that you that the town charges to the owners, and that will cover that additional fee cost. So that's not more expense to you guys. Um, and then I believe that prior to the owner fees, the new estimated price of the Southern, I think it's 605, 400, right? And then um, after the owners uh, pay, it's 352, right? 352, yeah. It looks like he's got on here that owning and operating and installing the pipes makes a difference of $80,000. Yeah, and that includes connections and everything. Yeah, service pipes and connections. Mm -hmm. And that's where that extra 4500 a year each will cover that. And they all agree to that. Is that this part of the sewer rate or is that an additional connection charge? For... I haven't talked to anybody about that. Okay. That's something we need to get cleared up for. Yeah, is there, is there going to be an additional connection fee because of that? Email? Well, they're talking about a maintenance fee for. Uh, above and beyond their user fee to cover, you know, these pumps are going to wear out at some point. Yeah, they actually wear out pretty fast. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know a lot about these. Like I said, we have two of them in town, and they're owned and operated by the by the homeowners. So I'm glad we're also not responsible going to be responsible for the power to them because that would be another great cost. expense you know we have another meter head out there and another power bill for each location so three well, i just make sure because we've always had problems with not having agreements signed before contracts go out for bid and everything and then the town ends up beating the cost that's why the yeah. easement agreement is going to have all that spelled out. Yeah, it needs to because mm -hmm. 
we can't afford to continue to eat these costs because of the mistakes that people are making in design. And it seems like that we continue to eat these costs. And it's happened on every project since I've been a council here and projects prior to me coming in. It seems like every single time there's anywhere from a 10 to 40 percent increase in every single project that this county has. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of held a hard line on the easements and everything else. We're tired of paying yeah. all these change orders. We can't afford it. Anything else under the engineering? Any good guess? Public works? Um, no, that's pretty well covered. I had I had all day from North End to talk about both yeah. of them. I, I did uh, ask Kevin at our last meeting to get together, take his truck out there uh, when he was headed out next, so we could see exactly what it was going to take to hook from all ways to his apparatus, and he's not contacted me yet, so. Uh, I better be getting a hold of him because 15th, and then we're looking at 17th, 18th for a training day, and then they'll be on. You might with me after the meeting, Jeff, and give me those dates, and I'll make sure that Kelsey the new owner gets a copy of those dates. I have all of her contact information, and that way they know that it will get taken care of. Okay. I, was say you might I thought you would have got a hold of me before now, but. It's pretty mm -hmm. readily available stuff. So it's like a three inch hose and a couple of fittings. So you can get it confirmed with the yeah. And you might get a hold of them again tomorrow. Because yeah. I know they've been home. I've been seeing them. Um, well, the one I'm particularly dump, interested in is the one, the, one for the, with them, the one I'm really interested in is the one for the chemical toilets. Because I know they're yeah. Uh, yeah. the small toilets. <laughs> That's the one that's going to have the most problems. Yeah. Just all right. Okay, uh, let's move over to Michelle. Okay, so we had uh, Cassell come out and train our staff for two full days, and it was amazing. We've been, amazing. Uh, I've learned that we're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I'm excited about it because we've got a handle on what we need to how we need to clean up um, a lot of our utilities, the way that it was entered in on customer records was incorrect. So we're having to go back and make sure each one of those entries that are either connected to a homeowner or to a landlord are accurate. Um, and it's, we're getting better. I'm feeling a lot more confident in what we're doing. Um, I defended our large pool grant to the Oregon State Parks and Recreation Committee. Um, I felt like it went well until we got a question. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody did good until somebody asked. Yeah, it was um, great. I wish I could have just gotten off. Um, the question was Was I sure that the amount? The grant was for seven hundred and fifty thousand and was I sure that we were able to do what everything that we were proposing to do for that amount? And I said I was assured that we were. Um and he said I don't think so. I think you're wanting more than what the grant allows. And I I don't know. I felt like either we're gonna be called to go back to the drawing board to reassess how much it's actually costing or they'll ask us to take out parts of what we want to do at the large pool or, or they'll say no i, I was sad <laughs> but it's out of my hands now um they the committee also met for the small grant for uh, mcdonald park for the seventy-five thousand. we should be hearing back either this week or next i'm surprised we haven't heard yet so um that's that our Tomorrow, our grant for the North Water extension goes to committee, and we should know two weeks from tomorrow if we've been awarded the grant. So right around the council meeting. Yes. <coughs> yes. So I'm I'm enthusiastic about that one until somebody asks me a question. So. <laughs> um. Let's see, we've just been doing um, 
a lot, just working a lot of cleanup, trying to get the North Project online, giving accurate timelines so that we can let people know when we're expecting the break to ground, when the project should be completed, um, and meeting with um, Fire and 911 and just catching up with how they're doing with training. Um, we did a submit for our FEMA grants, um, but FEMA has been um, $85 million has been cut from their budget to go to fire and wildfire fire prevention. So we, it was a highly competitive grant anyways, and it just ellipsed itself into being super hyper competitive. So um, we'll see how that goes. I, mean, I think we have a marginal op opportunity. This is fine to ask questions. Yeah. I might have missed this whole thing, but when we talked about raising the water rates, which we just did, right? Hmm? That was for the hauled waste. That was that was the, hauled water and sewer. the water rates weren't raised? No. No. Well, <laughs> well and my wife is going to pay for that. <laughs> okay. I, I know you're right. I don't think you were. <laughs> they, they, they changed the way they're estimating water rates, uh, way they're estimating the water bills, and yours might have been one of the ones that they averaged over a year. And so you did see an increase on your water. That's bill. what she showed me. And yeah. I said, I said, that's, pay that's, pay, pay it that's not due to an increase in rates. That's due to a, a different format for estimating during the winter time. I'll go over that with you. You're still right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if I wanted to ask another question about 911 and, and dispatch or fire, just now the time. Or you can ask. You can ask any time during the meeting. Anytime these guys put on a presentation, you can ask. Okay. Well, they're got the floor. Okay. So you can ask anytime. Okay. Like I, I'm totally for computers and all that stuff, but how do you come up with $400,000? I mean, it seems like you can buy a lot of stuff for that. Well, or is that that's, just the ballpark figure? Well, if you stamp police, fire, or medical on a piece of equipment, you can quadruple the price because it has to have redundancy built in. Uh, Motorola for the, the consoles uh, was 200 and some thousand for a radio equipment. Microwave, I think, was $20,000. Uh, the only thing they have to make them so robust that you know you pay for it. I mean, but I mean, we'll get a list of that stuff. Or? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that that would make me feel because it might yeah. be three hundred and fifty thousand, right? Or no? Well, it could be. I mean, I mean, yeah, it could be. Um, okay. And then there's also training they provide. They come down and provide training right. to get everybody up to snuff on it. Okay. But the because it is emergency equipment, it has to be built with redundancy and robust. Anyway, sure. Over the stuff you can get off the street. Sure. And uh, all of the equipment we're getting now is on um, will be purchased on state contracts, so it's basically the lowest bidder. But those things just. Yeah, I mean, I'm not against that. I'm just questioning yeah. how that process works. I mean, our our phone system that we just put in two years ago, which was paid by your 911 tax, was over three hundred thousand dollars to answer the phone. Yeah, but it has multiple redundancies in it, and so that you never drop a 911 call, and that's what you're paying for is the technology and the redundancy that you know when they call, it's answered. Versus a Nortel system or what you can get off the shelf. So, what what kind of timeline do you have for a tech refresh and all that stuff so that you you stay current instead of us getting the four hundred thousand dollar bill? To, I mean, is there a way to, to stay current with all of the well, equipment? In in the past, I have requested the town manager at budget time to set money aside, just like we all do in the real life. Is we say we know we got this roof to replace in 20 years, so you stick a little bit of money. But they had not put, and that was grant, it was grant funded, so the town didn't pay anything for it. But 
things wear out, yeah. and there was no provision in the budgeting process to replace that equipment. So it's like every, you know, is it going to be every 15 years that we're going to have a crisis? Or do we put some money aside each year for that capital expense? And from the time 91 started, the town has never put money aside for replacement of equipment. It, it's part of the mass that you two volunteered to help clean that up. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to put some money into yeah. once we get the new system. Um, chances are, by the time the loan's paid off, it's time to buy a new one. So the one and the fire department. I mean, it's like having a car. I mean, by the time you pay the darn car off, it's time, you know, the car's not worth anything. You've got to get it. So taxes and a car payment for a lot of people are forever. Hey, uh, hey Rick, real quick. If I can add a little bit on Michelle's on the AFG grant, when we first set out to do that, we was going to do the 911 stuff and then some fire stuff too, but there were certain things that wasn't allowed within the grant under radio equipment and things like that to get Scott's stuff in there. All it could be would be portables, um, mobiles, and paging systems. So we kind of did a regroup there. We've got our grant writer that's working on the portable radios for us and a mobile repeater. And then some of the other stuff we was looking on the fire site in a grant, we went in regionally with Thomas Creek West Side to do a countywide SCBA grant and RIT pack. So it would replace all of the SCBAs for every district within the county. And that's going to be expected to be over a million dollars just on that. You know, we're asking for. I think 26 packs and spare bottles and things like that. So that's going to be a big grant, but we got it going on one side and then we got it going on the other side too. So hopefully, in our grant that we're writing, is also going to benefit other fire districts too, not just Lakeview. It's going to be everybody else plus the RFPAs. Okay, we pretty much covered the old, old, old business during the department report, so let's just move into new business. Um, resolution 1003, which is uh, setting the rate for the hall sewer waste disposal for town hall waste station. I need a motion to accept that. I need to put a person on some time for Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, number three. Pass uh, this rate. Shall be effective five years, May 1st, 2021. On or before May 1st, 2021, the town of Lakeview shall reevaluate the rate for gallon to be adequate to maintain the hallway. For that should be 2026. Right. So my that makes more sense because what, it, what the way it reads, correct? It actually uh, it yeah. says we have, even though we vote this resolution in, we have until May 2021 to change the rate. Correct. It should, that's a misdemeanor. Uh, so my suggestion is you guys make the motion to have it um, as corrected, and that way I'll provide a clean copy. Okay. Updated. But yeah, it's correct. I'll uh, make a motion to pass resolution 1003 as corrected. Second. Motion to make a second. Those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Um, we're going down to Mark Albertson. Discussion of town and county splitting costs of ordinance officers. Where do you want me, Rick? Uh, right, right there is fine. Okay. Just stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to leave this on or? No, no go ahead and take off. So, so um, as you guys all know, that we're in a need of a resource officer. Um, most of our calls for South Lake County are within the city limits of Lakeview. Most of our calls for the county 
are on the north end. And so I got a hold of Klamath County and the, count, the Klamath County supports theirs with franchise fees from their uh, sanitation department and any other kind of franchise fee. Um, the, the county doesn't have franchise, but you guys receive Lakeview Sanitation and then Charter Cable. And I'm just making a suggestion that I would like to go in partners with the with the city of Lakeview, um, since most of the calls on the south end are Lakeview, and most of the calls on the north end are Christmas Valley. So we'd split it half and half for a nuisance officer. Um, and my suggestion would be that the city of Lakeview pays for it out of their franchise fees that they receive. Um, I guess that's. Have you looked at the cost at all, Mark? what it's going to cost for so most of them are right around 60 to 70 grand plus benefits most of them are right at 100 by the time you get yeah. benefits and so um, uh, that was the case what we want to do is we had uh, Julie Little from this she her folks live here, mm -hmm. and um, she's a nuisance officer for the city of Bend. She came down and gave us a presentation, and I would just like to have her come down again if she couldn't, if we decide to partner up. Um, we want to work on our nuisance, not, all, not only our ordinance. I think our ordinance are fairly well. It's an enforcement part of it that, that, you know, that we all have trouble with. Um, right now we just send letters and uh, the way that Ben does it is they send a letter then they send a citation after a certain amount of days uh, and then it goes to their circuit court. I've also already talked to our court and they said that they would take it. Uh, if they don't pay the circuit court they're turned over to collections and then we can put a lien on them if they don't pay that. Um, how it was set up before was it would go before the commissioners and I don't want any part of it. I want it to be handled by the court system. They get the money out of them uh, and the collection agency turned over to them and then it sticks with them. Um, right now, the way we're doing things, there's no teeth involved and so I, I'm assuming the city is kind of the same. Yeah. Uh, so I thought we would join forces, uh, restructure our enforcement part of it as a group and um, partner up and start cleaning it up. The other consideration you guys need to put out there is who's going to normally see the city attorney or county council, but depending on where that would be, that would have to prosecute that citation. That's not something you have an officer necessarily do. So. You have to, so that is an additional cost. So the the nuisance there. officer would file, correct, and that would be the end of it. They wouldn't enforce it themselves. It'll be up to the court, and the court won't order without somebody representing the the agency that's doing it. So that's normal. Yeah, we can work through all that. I mean, it's just something that needs is the additional cost. Of that. I, I think this is the city of Bend is a very good thing, but. And I, I should have brought that over to you guys. I have a, a copy of how they do it. And well, I can get it from you. I'm very good friends with you. Yeah. I, I went to that, that class. It was really good. Mm -hmm. I know Don's been doing some of it for us and sending out letters and stuff. So um, they used OR. We, talked, we talked once before about getting a, a code enforcement officer or something, you know. And uh, no, I, I like the idea of partnering up. We did when we had dope tipper and stuff. And also, we, also we do is like do an MOU with you guys and we'll work on that as a team. And kind of like what we have with the sheriff's department. Yeah. And the 
the position would probably be um, through Ken Kenny uh, Cooper would probably be the supervisor since it's plant planning department has all the ordinances and they have to do the structural ordinances anyways and so that's probably how that would fit. Shouldn't our ordinances match though for this purpose? Um, I'm assuming so, Don, but I haven't ever read the city, so I don't know. Okay. And also in our ordinance is dogs. With the way our ordinance is writ for cleaning, it also has dogs and other things. So, so I mean, that's something we can discuss if we want to take that on, but we got to figure out where the dogs are going to go and who's going to pay for them. And the, the biggest expense that we're going to see is if we ever get to the point of abatement and cleanup. Um, you know, that's expensive. That's where the money is. And, you know, sometimes the cleanup is going to be cost more than the... So if it's a rental, is it going to go on the landlord or is it going to go yes. on the on the person that's the tenant. It's the 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 owner of the property. Everything always falls on the property. Water bills, cleanups, all always falls on the And the headache you run into is that sometimes some of these properties are worth less than what the cost of cleaning them up are. So that's the other but it's also a health hazard too. So it's it's they're they're not easy. So what do you do with the property that say the people are deceased and you've got squatters there? So we have that going on right now um, over here, and uh, there, that that right now is in the process of the county taking that back because of no taxes being paid, um, and so that one's probably going to be sold in May, I think, is the date, and uh, then we have to go in there and clean it and uh, that's just part of see like before COVID Kenny Cooper the the building director he could shut water and power off but now that COVID is going as you guys know on this property that I think their water bill is a couple grand right who's that yeah, the one on L Street? No, it's over on U. Well, there's another one. That's on a county property. I'm not sure, but yes, I think I know which one you're discussing. Anyway, so due to COVID, they had to turn the power and the water back on. That's what's nice about having it under the planning or the building department is because they have the authority to shut things down if there's a safety here, and and so. They could shut off, but since COVID happened, we had to turn everything back on. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but there's other means on how we can figure out getting them out of there. So, and I'm welcome for any ideas. <laughs> but I see that because of the COVID regulations now, it's even hard to do a forced eviction. Yeah, I mean, you can't hardly evict anybody. And, you know, if we start cleaning things up, it's going to help our economic development. I mean, it helps everything. It, 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 it helps with the whole hope in the community. I mean, uh, and people say, you know, they don't have the money. Well, it doesn't cost money to not be a slob. And so, you know. Maybe we can uh, do this in a work session and you can bring your stuff over and we'll get our stuff gathered up. Sounds good. And we can go through everything. Then we can figure out just exactly what it's going to cost each side. Yeah, we need to look at our ordinances and see. There, there's definitely, I'm sure there's going to be some changes to some of the ordinances to match to the county. And the, and I just want us, I want us to have the same. You know, we can't run with two different ways. Yeah. And uh, to a point, you've got to remember there are some development code stuff and whatever that are particular, some of the nuisance stuff or whatever are development code things specific to us because of people being within closer proximity to one another. So there's some parts you can, the nuisance one, 
depends on what the parties want to look at. But remember, we do have specific stuff in our development code that prohibits certain things. We have different concerns with the smaller, again, people being close together if it's what's developed. Yeah, that we'll reason. deal with those as we get started. Okay, thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. right, next one. Do you have another line. question? Are you going to be here till the end of the meeting? I can be. I need to talk to you about a couple of things. Okay. Thank you. All right, that's on the fire 911 dispatch equipment and the $4,000 loan. Um, Michelle's been on top of that really well. We've been talking about this. And you'll notice that the FEMA grant will not cover the equipment that's needed over there. That whole thing needs to be completely replaced. Scott was up on up on the hill here, and we spent four thousand dollars just to get get it back up and running. And this is what's been happening: is we've been basically putting band aids on everything. Plus, we're outdated, so. Where it's not covering that, we probably could try for a $400,000 loan and get that up and running before it goes down and then we lose everything. We need to do something on this because it's also become a safety issue with law enforcement and everything else. Over there as well, the fire department is actually in it. We need to look at what the terms are in the law. So I called Business Oregon and I talked to Larry Spoltkoff today. Whole thing? Okay. Well, Scott. <laughs> the Larry guy. The Larry guy. And I am putting together an executive narrative and I'm asking for Scott to send over a compiled presentation of everything that we need and the dollar amount so that I can get that over to Larry for him to take to his committee. What I'd like to do is send it to everybody and say this is what we're needing, this is why we need it, this is when the last time it was um, replaced and um, the estimate I was getting from both Scott and Dennis was around 400000 until I get all of the specific prices in each item, I won't know for sure, but there's the chairs that they're setting in are, what, 10 years old? 17. That's all? <laughs> um, so there's just a lot that needs to happen over at 911. Um, I mean, we, they need updated carpet and paint and desk chairs and desks and equipment and so we're going to have to decide what it is that we want to do um because i'm kind of folding in all of those things at once um and so it'll come down to just what you guys decide that you want to include or not include i'll put a package together and we'll take a look at it i mean i i think it needs to be done yeah most of our Operating systems are Windows 95, and uh, everything is non supported. Um, we could go to like uh, Washington County or Clackamas County or the big boys and get their used stuff mm -hmm. to do band aids, but it's still band aids. So you're spending $150,000, $200,000 on band aids? Well, just like the $4,000 bill to redo our fix our radio system was a hundred dollar interrupted power supply that was put in in uh, 2016 and it gave up the ghost and it just wiped our whole repeater system out and programming costs were basically it was just IT costs were four thousand dollars for hundred and fifty dollar so I mean, your guys' radios aren't very clear either, right? Switch to them all day. Well, which is sort of nice, but the the county owns the only radio system that the town owns is between dispatch, the microwave between dispatch and the mountaintop. And the reason why we went with the microwave 
is it used to have copper lines up there. And then the radio system would quit. So then we call CenturyLink and pay them $300 to go up and say, no, it's a radio problem. So then we pay the wireless $300 to come over here and say, no, it's a CenturyLink problem. So then we had to get them guys together and say, and fix it. So we went with one vendor, one path, so we didn't have to deal with Copper or Billy Bob in his back hole up there, digging something up. And, uh, and it's worked very well, but we're at the point now that uh, we're just well, they're not supported anymore. Uh, you know, that's just the industry. They, you know, you buy a computer tomorrow, and then you know, within well, when you buy it, it's obsolete. Yeah. Yeah. Put a package together, bring it to the council, and look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do. It. Perfect. I would say the sooner the better. Well, I got it all. Well, I got salesmen still calling me, going, "What council say? What council say?" <laughs> But there'll be some other added I have to add in because you know our uh, printers, our laser printers are 17 years old. We'll put, put a complete yeah. yeah, we'll just do a complete package. Yeah. And then you know, if we over the wing site, we can fiddle some stuff down. Yeah. I, I'd rather see everything all at once and then we'll determine what we can do now and what we may have to do later right. instead of halfway through the project saying, Oh, I need another $200,000. That's what I'd like to see. Yeah, because I don't want to kind of see like six hundred thousand, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah. So no, I, I think I mean, but every any, anything you can think of that that needs to be dealt with and upgraded, just throw it in. There. I, I had that lecture this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scottish, so you know, I you know, for many years, you know, we had to use uh, is. For notebook paper, we took the old teletype paper, cut it in half, and glued it for our scrap paper because we had no money for uh, for sticky notes. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and when you go to the bathroom, <laughs> I'm I, I, I gave them a half I'm Like, you need a bag, let me know now and not after because it just give it all to me right now. Let me know instead of piecemealing it. Well, yeah, it makes it easier for the council to make a good educated decision on what we need to do and, and the direction we need to go. Yeah, because you know, you, you pay for it, and I come back and say, Oh, by the way, yeah, yeah. okay, you don't want that. All right, does anybody have anything else? Shell, Don, Don, yeah. Golden. Okay, then we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting at uh, 443.